Here we are. We're back. Hey, everyone. I'm Melina Putnam with Chicks in Charge, a leadership and social club for women leaders. And I also have Yay Dude, a media and marketing company. And we are continuing on with our series on our Read and Lead book club. So we read a new book every two months that is a personal and professional development book. And I'm really excited. I always have another boss chick here in the coop with me on the podcast. And today I've got Carla Doctor. She is aka Batty K, I hear. And she is a speaker facilitator. She's really gotten into breath work in the last year, which I love. I've been to her breath work classes. And, you know, she is a kindred spirit when it comes to fun. And so welcome to the podcast, Carla. Hey. So excited to be here. Thank you. Thank so you. Thank excited you. to have you. So we're today we're talking about the book, The Power of Fun. I'm going to show it here for our, we're going to show everyone on our YouTube channel. Where's my camera? How to Feel Alive Again by Katherine Price. And she's also the author of How to Break Up with Your Phone. So just saying, if that's something that you need to do, that is a constant struggle for me, breaking up with all these devices to have more fun. So we're going to dive right into this topic today. And so the way that she describes fun, and I like, especially toward the end of the book, she's like, you know, fun is something that's too general. Like we almost consider everything fun. Like if it's not work, it must be fun, which we know is not true. Right. And so her <laughs> definition is that true fun has playfulness, connection, and flow. So her thing is like, if it doesn't have those three things, then that's not true fun. It could be called fake fun. So like binging a show is fake fun. If you're sitting there mindlessly scrolling through your social media, that's fake fun. It takes our time and, and we are maybe getting those dopamine hits, but it's not playful. We're not feeling connected to anyone really. Um, and we definitely don't find ourselves in the flow. And we may actually feel drained when we do that more than feeling good. So Carla, kind of give us your thoughts on true fun. How much fun do you have in your life? Why is it important for women to be really intentional about fun for ourselves? Yeah, so um, I, I really needed this book. I've always been like, I'm the permission giver. Everybody always comes to me for fun, but I wasn't nice. really intentionally creating it for myself. And I noticed that if I, that she has like a fun audit and nothing says fun, like doing an audit, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but like, if I were to look back at what I scored myself when I first read the book versus where I'm at now, one of the big differences was like, I was going through a really challenging time. And I think oftentimes when we go through challenging times, the things that light us up, that, that, that spark life in us are the things that are the first thing that go on the back burner. And while like, mm -hmm. I knew how to have fun, I've had lots of fun in my life, maybe too much fun in some, some cases, but yeah. I wasn't prioritizing it and I wasn't making space for it. And so what I really enjoyed about the book was creating that intentional time. And then even like going back, like it's fun to, to go back and to think about the times that you had fun. So even if you can't have fun right now in this moment, because you can't travel or you don't have the funds yet or whatever those different pieces are that sometimes just reminiscing or going through your phone and looking at photos from those moments of true fun, like when you're at the beach and when your girlfriend, then it starts playing in your head and your girlfriend said that thing and you all started laughing and she shot wine out her nose and it became a whole <laughs> thing, right? Like, like it can take you back there. And sometimes just re-experiencing that can like make that energetic shift. A lot of what I do is like energetics and creating that. And so one of the big things with this is that when like our, our state in, in what we're in will create more of that. So if we can energetically tap into fun and joy and happiness and fulfillment with these moments and or reflecting back on the past ones, we get to create more. And that shifts our energy and our vibe to get us to the next space, to get us through, 
you know, what I call the WTF moments, you know, to overcome those, those different pieces. So that was one of the big things. It's, it's like really um, being aware of when you are going through a challenging period, like how can you make sure like that people can tap back into this? Do you have somebody that I can be like, Hey, Melina, if you notice that, like, I don't start doing these things or you haven't heard from me, like, reach out because I am withholding fun as like a self punishment on top of whatever's going on. And so really having, um, a fun accountability partner. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I love that she talks about having a fun squad in the book. So a couple of concepts that I loved a fun squad. So it's, it's people that you give yourself permission to have fun with. And there are those people who just seem to naturally, and I know I'm one of them, to naturally just get people together. And you love novelty because that's something that uh, research has shown that novelty does give us those feel good hits because it's something new to us. And so to challenge ourselves a little bit to say, you know, if you go like, oh, live concerts aren't my jam. Well, when did you last go to one? And maybe you're thinking that because if you think back and and like, maybe that experience wasn't great for you, or maybe it was when you were, you know, young in your twenties and you went to a live concert and your boyfriend broke up with you after, and then somehow you've connected those Mm -hmm. things and something that a lot of people do find pleasure in live music, a concert, because one of the the terms I love is collective effervescence. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a bad mood and you're thinking like, you know, I'm just not in the mood to go to the game, you know, tailgate Saturday, it's going to be, and you, we find all these excuses to talk ourselves out of having fun and putting ourselves in those places. And she taught, she, she calls those fun magnets. And so to me, that's what I would look at, you know, a live concert, a, Um, the tailgating, anything that's going to get us together, the events that we have in Chicks in Charge. You know, we just had Chicksella uh, last week. And those are all times that we can get together and just have fun. We had games there. And of course, it ended up raining here in Oklahoma City. But the idea is that we create those fun magnets. And then we have to give ourselves permission to say, instead of saying like, Oh, well, on Thursday nights, I, you know, my child has band practice and I got to take them instead of saying, you know, could someone else do that Mm -hmm. responsibility or task for me so that I can go for an hour and have fun, connect with other women? Um, You know, I mean, that that's something that women, we really struggle with. We have that mom shame and mom guilt and, and all that. Because if someone's like, well, didn't your child have, you know, dance practice that night? Yeah. And she went and practiced dance. And I went out and had a happy hour with my girlfriends because I hadn't seen them in weeks. You know, so why do you think that is? How can women get over that hump of of giving ourselves permission to have fun? Well, I think one of the things is it starts with one person that can be the domino to create that because when you, Melina, start to show up and be you and you're having fun, then that slowly like lowers people's guards and, and lets them in to have fun too. Like, oh, so if you do skip out on dance rehearsal to go have happy hour and you're sharing that with someone, and then they're like, oh, well, maybe I could do that too. Right. So like the permissions granted, like the only person that's going to give you permission is yourself. Yeah. You can, you, if you want to seek for reasons why you can't do something, you will find that if you want to seek reasons in which that you can, you can find that too. And, you know, so I think that's something she covers in the book too, is like creating your own permission slip. And again, nobody is going to give that permission to you. And if you want, Hey, everybody, I give you permission to have fun, to choose yourself, because at the end of the day, you're the only one that can do that. Right. And the more that you do that, and the more that you fill your cup up, and the more that you have joy, the more that you then get to spread that to your family. You get to show up as a better parent because you had that hour of time by yourself that how you show up for your partner, for your children, and all the other spaces for your business, work, whatever, 
that's going to shift and change because you're giving yourself that permission. And I actually started doing that on Wednesdays. I take a half day, I block off my calendar and I go play pool with my friends just to like no work, just to have fun and to let loose. And, and I had to block that off and protect that, make that space. Like she talks about in the book, but then also give my permission, give myself permission and then release the shame. And shame is a whole spiral that I think too many women live in, but a lot of that's coming from we're afraid of what other people might think. Yeah. And when we can start to to release that, can I share a tip on what I do? Yes, please. People? So sometimes it's just talking, it's speaking it out loud because in our in our minds we have this like negative chatter that can take us down. If you were to just like if there's somebody that you're afraid of or whatever, or like, just like looking in the mirror and just like, say it all out loud. Don't let anybody else hear you, but like, say the real, real things. Like I like to tap when I do this, but there's so much power in just getting it out. And it's like, God, you're such a crappy parent for going out and having happy hour. How dare you go do that? You know, what were you thinking? Da, 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 da. You feel a release and then you see how silly it sounds. And you're <laughs> yeah. like, oh, like really? I'm going to, I'm going to be miserable and sad and and not see my friends forever because I have all of these other obligations and responsibilities, but no, they, they need me too. So sometimes just like saying it out loud, um, with nobody else to hear you because we don't want anybody else to hear what really goes on in our head, um, can really then free up that space and give yourself permission to do it. Yeah, I like that. And, you know, she talks about, too, another book that we read last summer, which was Unicorn Space, and that is creating a, basically a safe place for you to be creative and explore. And she encourages, I think it's Eva Rodowski, maybe something like that, is the author of Unicorn Space. And she also has Fair Play, which she wrote during the pandemic about inequality in relationships and how most of that housework and the, all the childhood duties. And then if you're taking care of elderly parents, that predominantly falls on women. So of course, what's going to go to the back burner, that's going to be the true fun and it's going to be the social connection. And so women end up feeling lonelier and lonelier. And we know we have a loneliness, you know, pandemic epidemic probably happening. And it, it was actually pretty bad even before COVID happened. And then now it's, it kind of kept people apart from each other and all of that. So we do have to be intentional. So I love what you're saying about blocking out that time. And that's something that I, cause I'm a big planner and I love my like physical planner to write down everything that I have. And I have to schedule that in. And whenever I get invited, you know, through yay dude, um, or maybe a chick has a grand opening or something like that, I will write it down right then and block out that time to make sure that I can go and attend that. Because if I just let life happen, Mm -hmm. then we're just, it's like, we feel like we're on in a rat race. Right. And Mm -hmm. she talks about how society was not meant to be this way. If you look back through time before the industrial revolution, how we used to you, by the time the sun went down, like you were done. And you, everyone would gather around the fire and then the whole community would get together on the weekends and you'd have these dances and you'd have the live music. And that's where you became a really good neighbor. And that's where you could say, hey, neighbor, can I borrow your, um, I need a bale of hay for this and I need this. And then you have that community and that's what is missing so much. And so we, we've got to be intentional about creating that community then, because if we're just sitting here on our phones all day and thinking that that's how we're going to be connected, it's, it's not, it just does not feel the same. So I love her research in the book on that of like, that's why I I like that her subtitle was how to feel alive again. So she talks too about, so things that you do with others and that creates that community and, and that collective effervescence. I love, I'm huge football fan. I love game days and that kind of thing. Um, Fourth of July is coming up. We're we're recording this right before the fourth. So that's a great opportunity. Like look at the calendars and see what things can you say yes to. So give us an idea, Carla, like what are some of those things that you 
have found yourself trying to say yes more. You said yes to the pool um, community wise. And then even just like the solitary fun, like hobbies and, and interests that really fill you up. Yeah. So I'd say one thing is, you know, finding, finding your people and finding a community. So like chicks in charge was like a huge piece of that for me. That was like, when I was going through that dark time, it was like, that was the one thing that was my non-negotiable on my calendar. That was like, I need this. I, because just the collective effervescence, I just love that word Um, (laughs) in that space and being surrounded by, by other like-minded people that like you could just be yourself. And that was a beautiful thing. So finding different groups, whether that's um, locally or online before I did a lot of things online, but I didn't realize how much I miss like human to human Mm -hmm. contact and interaction, um, especially with the panorama and all the other things. And um, so that was good. Or like finding different meetups. It was like, I just went to Ohio two weekends ago um, to meet my online friends that I've been zooming with every single week for the last three and a half years. We never met in person. And one of them was getting married and we're like, we should meet in person. And so we did and we went and it was the most beautiful thing ever. Like I, you know, had to do a lot of self-talk to like give myself permission to do that. And it was everything that I never knew that I needed. Yeah. And, um, but like when I was there, someone was even talking about like a philosophy group that they go to, like there's a group for everything and just look up on, on meetup or Google, like saxophone groups in Oklahoma city or dance classes. Cause that was another thing that I've been doing. I've made it a non-negotiable to go to this, uh, woman's empowerment, like dance fun, woo thing. And we breathe and we dance and we cry and we laugh. And the, the more that, that you step into you and you start honoring and recognizing those pieces within you, which often comes from either being exposed to it in other community or you giving yourself that solitary time to reflect on like, what is it that I really want to do? Mm -hmm. Um, What do I enjoy doing? And then finding those different places because the more that you feel comfortable with who you are and allowing people to see you, that's when you really have that strength and connection when you're in your authentic, authentic space and, and, and you feel seen, you allow people to see you, um, that the things just kind of naturally flow and become more joyful and fun and all those pieces. Oh, I love that. And I love that you did that girlfriend trip with people you'd never met in person before, but of course we get to know each other through, you know, this technology and all of that. So I, I love that you did that. I think that that is a recommendation that I would say is for women to give themselves permission to go do things with other women. And instead of just like, if you said you have, well, we have one vacation a year and let's say you're, because you're the mom, you're the one that's in charge of putting it together, which is extra work on top of the stuff you were already doing. And so a lot of people, there's that joke of when you need a vacation from your vacation, because the whole time you're managing the little people and big people's expectations. And I do see a lot of generational trips. So it'd be like grandma, grandpa are going, and then you've got the parents and then the kids and then maybe, and it's like, that can be very stressful. If, if, especially if you're the one that's in charge of, of doing it, and then you're keeping everyone else happy and you may not have had any true fun on that trip. No, my mom used to do that. Bless her heart. Like she did so much to plan the most extravagant vacations and would plan everything to the T. Like when we were going to the amusement park, it was like, she would do all this research. We have to go on this ride first because this one's the most popular and the line will be the the shortest. And like, and so then that also, like while she was doing that so that we would have the best time ever, like it took away the spontaneity, the creation, the exploration. And that when I think of like true fun, what I get to experience now, it's like, there is no real agenda. Like, yeah, there might be some structure, but like going to Ohio, it was like, we knew that we had a wedding to go to and some place to go to for drinks, but like just exploring and getting to be is sometimes I think as the mom or the vacation planner, I think that you all put a lot of pressure on yourself. My little guy's four. So we haven't had to 
I haven't had to experience all of that yet. Yeah. Um, but I think that, I think that you're really hard on yourself on trying to create the most perfect experience. And if I reflect back when I was younger, that the most perfect experiences and the most fun were the most random, the campgrounds that didn't have anything but a crick and some turtles and a boat, like <laughs> no playground, no nothing. But we ended up having the most fun. It was Turtle Creek. I, how do I even know that from when I was like eight? I don't remember yeah. anything. But it was those moments where we were able to like just kick back and relax and connect together. Um, yeah, I love that. Wonderful. That's so true. And I've been, th you know, I think since I have put girlfriend trips into my must do list, priority list, fun priority, uh, you know, last year I went to Vegas twice to see Shania first time Shania got sick. I think it was the only day maybe that she canceled a concert and happened to be when we were there, but that was a girlfriend trip. And then we went back again a couple months later to actually see her. And it was fantastic. And it's one of my favorite trips. And that was with other women. And the cool thing is that we didn't, we, we let each other have our quiet time and like, we'll, like whatever you guys want to do for the afternoon. So like the ones that wanted to go gamble could gamble. The ones that wanted to, uh, you know, shop, did the shopping. I just wanted to read by the pool. And so, you know, cause I'm like, when do you get these gorgeous pools available to us? And so that was what I chose to do. And so I, I think that's cool too, is that we, you know, do that and then set those expectations and talk about that ahead of time. Because yeah, if, if, if the person that's in charge is that real regimented, like well, we're doing this and we're doing this, then yeah, maybe that's not going to be fun for everybody. So I think that's the cool thing. We've been talking about emotional intelligence this month in chicks, just being able to really read the group dynamic and ask everyone and plug into, um, what each person really wants out of that so that they'll feel fulfilled at the end. Mm -hmm. And so it worked out really well. So I'm glad I did that. I have an annual lake trip that we do with um, some sorority sisters. And I look forward to that all year. I love what you said, Carla, about that reminiscing. And that's so true because I'll reminisce, like I'll look back at the pictures from the prior year because I'm like, now what did we do? And, that, and we stay at the same place every year. So it's really cool because you're looking back at, oh yeah, that morning it rained and we sat around and just had our coffee and you just talk about life and, and connect. And that's such a beautiful thing. So that would be something that I'd really encourage our listeners and viewers to do is to think about how could you make that a priority? And if you feel like you can't get away for a day or two days, could you just do something for the afternoon? Like what you're doing with playing pool with your friends. I think we could all find an afternoon or a regular you know, play date, quote unquote, um, mm -hmm. that you could do and set that as a calendar and not let an, anyone cancel it. I mean, unless it's like really a serious thing, you know, but could you make that a priority to say, you know, this is my medicine. I think that fun is medicine, yes. you know, yes. um, what else were, were there any other like little ahas or things that you liked from the book? Um, well, one thing I, I, I really enjoyed how you just talked about and reminded us about giving our friends permission. Like when we go on the girls trip that it was like, feel free to, or not to. And I think oftentimes as women, we will get our feelings hurt or upset if somebody doesn't want to do something with us mm -hmm. or we take it personally. But I think that the more that you start to give yourself permission, if you're giving yourself permission, it's also giving them permission to choose themselves mm -hmm. too really listening to your gut that like, if it's something that like deep down, you don't really want to do and you're doing it just because of somebody else, you're not doing anybody a favor because how you're energetically showing up in that is not, they're not going to get the yummy Melina or the yummy Carla. If we're coming out of obligation because you made us feel bad that we're not going right. And so right. if you want someone to honor and respect your decisions and what you want, like start doing that for yourself too, but then honoring that for other people. So I just wanted to mark yeah. that because it was like a really yummy thing that you kind of like sh you shot over, but like really wanted to like, okay. I like it. Yes. Um, I think part of it too was like when creating the fun piece, I forget what she said, but, um, 
it was like during the different exercises and like like looking at like your fun magnets and thinking about the characteristics and the fun factors, uh, a fun little um, saying that I use is like, wouldn't it be fun if dot, dot, mm. dot. Yeah. So the journaling or topic that's like, wouldn't it be fun if dot, dot, dot. I went to Ohio and met with my MBA mastermind chicks. And if I went to chicks in the sticks and wouldn't it be fun if I you know, did this and explored this and really just allowing that to flow because it takes away the pressure of all the things. And so that was like one of the big things that she has you do in here is like creating those fun factors and looking at those things, but then also, um, creating the, uh, like visualizing, like what that could look like for you Yeah, allowing that. And so, you know, me, I'm big on my visualization. So I, I really enjoyed that she put that in there and, and, giving yourself permission to just dream big. So, yeah. well, yeah. and she, it really, it, it was because of this book and the unicorn space book that I created chicks in the sticks for mm -hmm. our chicks so that we could go out and have fun together during the summer. And so you we're still going to get the community aspect. But we're also getting all those wellness aspects mm -hmm. of just being out in the sun and permission to play because we'll be in the water. We'll be in the pool. We'll uh, do yoga together. There's hiking and, and it's going to be hot. So like we're going to sweat and it's going to be, so it's going to be good for our kind of body, mind, soul thing. So I'm excited about that, that you mentioned that it's at the end of July, we're doing our first one. And then we're going to do a fall, you know, winter one in November as well. That'll kind of be just recapping the year. And then how do you want to set intentions for your 2024, but doing it in this very safe space, but still allowing yourself to have fun. I would say the other thing in the book that I wanted to mention uh, before we end today was when she was talking about a playground. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like with anything, if you have the tools and resources set up and make it easier for yourself to do it, then you're more likely to do it. Mm -hmm. And so um, my so I created a playground. The Mermaid Lounge is our side patio. And so I forever it was so I mean, you've probably seen all those houses that have that little side patio that goes off the master. It's not a very big space. It's got a fence. It's kind of ugly, right? I mean, it's usually nothing like you have to make it beautiful. And so I wanted to make that a little playground for us. And mm -hmm. so, you know, me being a creative director and everything, I had to name it and brand I branded it the Mermaid Lounge. So it's got I've got the twinkle lights. I've got the mermaid. <laughs> above the hot tub and we did invest in the hot tub and that was something that we did from the state fair like you're always wondering who the hell buys hot tubs at the state fair it was me I did it <laughs> and I love it it's one of my favorite things and so yesterday I'm I, I was at work and of course it's really hot here in Oklahoma it's 100 I guess and I was like I think I want to be in the pool right now and so I was like, well, what could I do in the pool? I don't want to bring my laptop. And I was like, oh, Carla and I are going to talk about the power of fun. So what better place for me to take my book and review it? And so I'm floating. And so in the in the summer, you can make your hot tub, of course, a pool. You just turn the temperature all the way down. I have it like 82, 83. And then um, it, so it's cool when I get in there and I just had my big floaty and I'm sitting there reviewing it. And so. I think it's more about those kind of things too. Like how could you incorporate a little bit of fun into mm -hmm. some of those things that we can do every day instead of thinking like, Oh, I can't have fun for, you know, two more months or something like what could, what little hobbies and things could we maybe go revisit that we used to love that would fill us up. And that was another exercise she had in the book. Cause if you're sitting there going like, I don't even know what I think is fun anymore. Maybe you're so detached from it because you're so busy just going, going, going and doing for others that you aren't even sure what you enjoy anymore. And I would say on that, maybe it's just exploring and saying yes. So when your girlfriend is doing something um, maybe say yes to it. You know, one of our chicks, Julie rising, you need to come to this if you're in town, Carla. Um, she put out there that uh, her daughter is like big in line dancing. And so, you know, we've got that big country place. And so one Saturday in July here in a few weeks, um, she was like, hey, if anyone wants to learn how to line dance and all that, like, let's meet here. And I was like, that sounds fun. 
Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to say yes to that because it's been so long since I've, I've done that. And that was something that I really enjoyed in mm-hmm. high school and college and, you know, going to Stillwater and uh, line dancing and, and all that. So, so I love that. I, and I'm going to say yes. And I think yeah. that that sounds like something you would like to do too, Carla. Oh, I know it's kind of of it. <laughs> I've, uh, I've gone a little country. You have? Okay. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody okay. I love this <laughs> between us. Chips. I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, so something that I did was like, or one of, when I went through coach training, they had us go create a list, um, of a hundred things that we love to do, okay. whether that's, or that we love, and that could be chocolate or this, or, you know, sunshine or sunsets and just like, what do you love in general? Mm -hmm. And then it was 50 things that you love to do as a kid. And I think oftentimes if we can tap into the yumminess of our childhood, I mean, if if you had a good childhood, right? Because I recognize that that's not the case for Mm -hmm. for all people, Um, but really finding those little bits and creating that. So when you said the playground, it's like, I have little playgrounds all over. It's like, I have this big giant unicorn here with my, um, wonder woman crown, like just above my workspace here. And, you know, you can create like a little, you know, if being on the beach is your thing, like get an old jewelry box thing, you know, from the local store and fill it with sand. And as you're sitting at the desk, like pretend that your little fingers are feet and you're digging your feet in the sand, right? It's like connecting you to nature or lighting. You know, we talk about the senses. So the new book that we're reading, which I haven't dove into yet, but when we talk about pleasure, pleasures more than just the, the naughty things, but it's tapping into your senses and like getting that and then creating your space to have those different pieces that like, I spray this fragrance right here that I bought when I was, God, I think I was like 17 in Florida. Like, I don't even know it's sea lily. Um, it's just this little spray, but it reminds me of my grandma's house. And I bought it when I was in, oh, this is a good hack. Buy a fragrance every time you travel or when you go explore and do something new and wear that fragrance the whole time. So I got this when I was in Florida visiting, uh, my mom's mom, because it reminded me of my dad's mom. Um, and now every time I spray it, I think of my grandma's and it brings me back to the joy and being at the pool and doing all those different things because scent is so powerful for memory and recollection. And so the more you can have those different pieces. And then I have like a beach spray, um, linen spray in my bedroom. And before I go to bed, I spray that and it feels like I'm at the beach, right? You can create these little pockets. So looking at the things that you love and then it's like, what's, you don't have to spend a million dollars. You don't have to go on vacation, but like, how can you create these little pockets throughout your home, throughout your office? Um, and, and really being intentional about it, but if it's there for you and it's in front of you, you get to tap into that and you get to, to explore or print pictures, like actually have photographs of those moments with your friends yes. through fun, print them out, put them on the wall, put them on your vision board that it's like, yes. And I want more this and more, like I want more going to the retreats, having all of those different pieces that like, you know, I'm work. I, I've been working on like reclaiming my house after all the things. And so it's like, a slow project, but like, I really want an adult sandbox in my backyard. There's a house that we almost bought that had a pergola in a big giant sandbox that had two lounge chairs and a cocktail table between it. And I'm like, that's <laughs> brilliant. Like that's I want that so I can watch the sunset in my faux beach right here, you know, fill up a little floaty with some water and you're, you're at the beach. What, yeah. what more do you need? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. And you're so right. It doesn't have to be expensive. A lot of times it is just um, reminding ourselves of that fun. So yeah, if you had that picture you could be like, oh yeah, I need to get a hold of 
you know, those people again and go ahead and set up that next thing. So that's beautiful. Thank you so much, Carla, for this conversation today. Cheers to you and everything that you do for the chicks and for your clients. And I want you all to connect with Carla. She's put right here, Carla Doctor on Instagram, and you'll be able to get links to her website and all the beautiful things that she's doing. Um, if you all want to learn more about Chicks in Charge, we're putting that in the show notes, but it's chicksincharge.club. And yeah, think about saying yes. I mean, that yes to fun, yes to true fun, not fake fun, uh, connection and play and flow and honor that we only have this one life that, and we want to make the most of it. And like you said, we're reading Life in Five Senses right now by Gretchen Rubin and how we can tie that in to make the most of all these experiences that we're having. I love it. And I love you, Carla, and appreciate you so much. And you guys keep listening, subscribe, check it out. And most of all, um, give yourself permission to have fun. Yes, Till yes. next time. <laughs>